Hi, I'm Angie. I want to welcome you to National Indoor RV Centers, where we specialize in the sales, storage, service, and detailing of only high-end, new, and used coaches. So basically, we do it all. Hi, I'm Angie with National Indoor RV Centers, and today I'm super excited to show you the 2023 Winnebago Revel. Now the Revel sits on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis. You've got a three liter, six cylinder diesel engine with 188 horsepower and 325 torque. Let's get started, but before we go there, I wanna make sure that I give you a call to action. <laughs> now I love making these videos for you. I hope that they're super informational for you, but make sure you give us a call at National Indoor RV Centers. We wanna take care of you from the first time you're even thinking about coming into the RV lifestyle until the day that you leave. So we want customers for life. We wanna give you a great price and then service your coach, um, store it if you need it. We've got paint and body. We've got it all under one roof. So make sure after you watch this video that you give me a call. Also with my videos, if there's something that you just wanna skip ahead to, there's chapters at the bottom of my video that you can go and you can go to that exact time frame. Um, if you don't wanna watch the full length feature. All right, so if we start at the very top of the van here, we've got our marker lights. In the center, we've got the antenna for our radio. Then we've got that great big windshield. That's what you're gonna see this beautiful country through. Um, one of those examples is where I'm at today. It's absolutely gorgeous, great temperature. Everything's green and beautiful. So what are you waiting for? Um, Right in the center of the windshield, there's a little triangle with the top cut off. There's a camera in there. That's gonna help with your traffic sign assist, um, some safety features that are built into the chassis. So we'll go over more of those at the dash. And then as we come down, we've got the nice LED headlights by Mercedes. We've got the cornering headlights once you drop below 15 miles per hour. Along the front, we've got these little dots here, and then we've got a sensor behind here that, that's gonna give you your adaptive cruise control. Now, let's say you've been traveling all day, your beautiful windshield is now covered in bugs and you wanna clean it. You can step up right here so that you can reach that windshield and get it nice and clean. And I do recommend doing that. Now right here, this is not a sensor, this is where your tow hook is. So you just push in, that pops out. And then inside uh, the passenger side door where your feet would rest while you're driving, there's a toolbox in there. Inside that little toolbox, is where the D-ring is, that it's a threading um, D-ring that you just screw that on. In case you take this Revel off-road and get a little too crazy and need a little help getting out, that's where you'll find the D-ring. Now, I also wanna let you know at National Indoor RV Centers, we can upfit your Revel. So I know that a lot of people like to make some specific changes to their Revel. Couple of the things that we do, and this is just a few of the items. Um, we can give you a beefed up bumper up front. Um, with a winch on it. So if you do get yourself into a um, situation where you need to be pulled out, you can easily do that. It's also gonna protect um, your front end and your headlights. These headlights are $1,000 for each side if you need to replace them. So you really wanna protect them. Another thing that we can do is we can beef up your lighting system. So you can add lights to the top, um, front, and rear of the Revel uh, along the front and on the corners. We can also replace your fog lights with an amber light. That's gonna give you better visibility in dust and snow. So those are a couple things. I also have a couple things that I'll tell you as we go around the coach, but just remember at National Indoor RV Centers, we are upfitters and we can take care of those extras that you wanna to add to your Revel. Let's check underneath the hood. So I've already released the hood. Mercedes has a nice heavy hood but a great latching system so I don't I'm not worried about it coming down on me so let's go start over here so the first thing you're gonna notice there's no battery in this area um, but this is where you would jump the coach um, if you needed to so your ground is right here and then your positive is right there so that you can get to that brake fluid windshield wiper fluid great thing about the Mercedes is that it has the rain sensing windshield wipers and the water is actually in the windshield wiper so it saves um, it's 25 percent more efficient in the windshield wipers than the normal system so that's pretty cool this right here is going to be the air intake for the engine and then we've got our oil fill now you'll notice that there's no oil dipstick you can go to your mercedes dealer to get a dipstick although you will get a readout at the dash 
of your oil life, basically a percentage. Um, you'll also get a readout at the dash for your DEF. So your DEF is your diesel exhaust fluid. Um, this is a five gallon tank. Um, people ask me how far they can go, typically about 5,000 miles on a tank. You're gonna have a readout at the dash for this as well. Just remember that uh, DEF does have a shelf life. Um, it, it's good for about a year. It doesn't like sunlight or heat. So just remember those things when you're buying it. Then we've got our coolant here. And this is the air intake for the dash AC system. We've gone with the upgraded tire and wheel package here. So we've got the BF Goodrich KO2 tires and they just look nice. Another thing that we can upfit your Revel with is an upgraded suspension kit. So we are actually going, it will raise it two inches back to stock level and then it's going to give you more stability and less sway as you're going down the road. So it's really one of those things you want to add to your Revel and we can do it for you at National Indoor RV Centers. Okay. All right, so pay attention to that running board. Um, Winnebago takes a running board that comes for, with the chassis from Mercedes, they get rid of it. They make this running board in-house, aluminum, lightweight, but really strong. It is um, attached to the chassis, um, welded and bolted. So literally, I can jump on it, it barely moves. Um, also, you've got this nice rubber strip here. It's got the Winnebago logo in it, the W, Flying W, which I love that they are constantly reinforcing that. But this is just really strong. And I'm telling you, one of my pet peeves is getting into um, a car, a truck, a van where you don't have a strong, sturdy step because, you know, one fall takes you off of going out of entering and doing lots of fun stuff. So I do love this. We also have it lit underneath. We've got the lights in front and we've got the D-ring. So the D-ring is great if you want to tether a pet to it um, while you're camping or if you've got bikes that you want to secure while you're you know, off on a hike. This is where you can do that on the front and on the back of this running board. On any RV, your exterior mirrors are key um, because they're just they're so important to make sure that you know where you're going, know, know what's around you. Um, they are internally controlled and you've got the defrost on them. So the top two thirds is internally controlled. The bottom mirror, you'll have to adjust manually. And then we do have the um, blind spot monitor indicator in the mirror as well. So again, to keep you safe and then our turn signal marker light on the side here. If you look up to the top of the passenger door, we've got our um, passenger side exterior light. Now that has like 10 LED um, bulbs in it. So it's nice and bright. It's not just a little dim light. It's actually gonna light up this area when you need to. If you look up top, we've got a great awning that runs the length of the Revel. Um, the controls for that are just inside the door. So you'll see right here, we've got our awning, a light control and the awning in and out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Um, it is a little windy today, so I may not leave it out for long. It does have a wind sensor on it. So if a you know, big gust of wind comes along, we should be fine. But that's one of those things I definitely recommend that you only bring your awning out when you are with your um, van. You never know when a big gust of wind may come along and, and take it off. So just to be safe, I only do that. Now you can turn on the lights. So look at that great awning. Look at all the shade that it gives you. And then you've got the strip of light there. So at night you can turn that on. Gives you a little ambiance. I love this. So right next to the um, awning buttons, we've got the button here for the light underneath your running board. So with the green, it's on and now it's off. And then we've got the light, your exterior light, security light for the just above the passenger's door. To the other side of the awning switches, we've got the two 110 outlets. Then we've got our refrigerator, which is super nice. So make sure you've got the travel lock on. But when you're in the campground, this opens all the way up so you can easily get into the refrigerator and freezer uh, while you're camping from outside, which I think is key. So much of um, the revel is taking it off road and you're getting dirty and you're going places where <laughs> there's not a great road system. So instead of tracking all your dirt in, you can just grab your drinks and your food from outside. So I do like that feature right below the refrigerator. We've got two more 110 outlets. So, and a 12 volt outlet. Say you wanna take your indu induction cooktop and cook outside here on the table. You can easily bring that out here, plug it in right there or plug it in up top. 
Now this table is really cool right now. This is a perfect example. I'm not exactly level, so it's a little low. I can bring that up a little. So I'm just gonna use my ring here. You're just gonna push in and move that up until it's the level that that works now. So now it's nice and level and I've got a great uh, area to sit and have my dinner or do my prep work. Very cool, love the way this works. And then when you're done with it, you just flip it right back up. Now just below the table, I've got three drains. Now when you fish, uh, initially just look at those drains, it looks like there's three freshwater drains. Um, but you do have a low point drain, this is your fresh tank drain, and this is your high point drain. So great example, this is why it's nice to have right here. Say you filled up your tanks, um, you went up in the mountains uh, in the winter, all of a sudden you thought it was gonna stay around, you know, stay a little bit warmer and it's getting closer to that freezing temperature. To protect yourself, you wanna go ahead and empty all those drains so that you don't freeze your fresh water tank. Just inside the door, you've got a D-ring here on the passenger side and you've got a D-ring that sits behind the driver's seat. It's sort of hard to see from here. The D-rings are great, especially if you've got gear that you've got in the center portion here of your van so that it's not you know, rolling forward or going, coming back. They, you can secure those items. And then just right inside the door here is your fire extinguisher. That's really important to have um, if you need it outside the van or if you need it inside that it's very accessible and easy to get to. Another thing I want you to go and watch is uh, my video on Protang fire suppression system. Um, it's a great system. You can have it customized to your van and you can put it only in the locations that you feel it's necessary. So make sure you check out that video and then feel free to give us a call and we can give you a quote today. So I grew up tent camping and one of my biggest pet peeves are zippers on tent doors. And so that's what initially when I saw this, I'm like, oh, there's a zipper. But this is the coolest system. Um, so easy to use. So just, you know, so you can totally out enjoy the outdoors. So just bring the screen down. You just have to zip it the first time on both sides. Now this is the cool part. Oh, look at that. This is a roll off door. Totally cool. This has a magnet strip down the inside of it, along with a, ma a magnet strip here. So you just do that and it's shut. So as you go in and out of the revel, you're not monkeying with that stupid zipper. You only have to do it once. Bring it down and then take it back up. So I love this. This is even great for the pets because they can go in and out as well. So I just love this system. It's one of my favorites. And then when you're done, when you want to put it away, just unzip it on both sides again. And then I do love that they give you this like foam roller in there. So it gives you something to work off of so that you can keep it nice and tight. Couldn't be any easier to use and just keeps that you don't really have to worry about the zippers because let me tell you, I broke plenty of them. <laughs> all right, we've got their engine exhaust here. As we come around to the back, I want to point out all the things here. Um, remember, National Indoor RV Centers can give you a beefier bumper here on the back as well. Another thing that we can add is a spare tire kit that will attach to the door so we can upfit you with that as well. Now, if we go to the very top, you're going to see your Coleman. Uh, air conditioning unit, that's a 13.5 BTU AC unit. And then we've got the rack there. So each crossbar of that rack will support 40 pounds. So in a minute, when I get up on the roof, I'll count those crossbars and then we'll times that by uh, the number of crossbars by 40 and that's how much weight you can put up on that roof. Um, we've got the ladder here and it is a locking ladder. I'll take that off and show you how to use that here in just a bit. Um, but continuing from the top, We've got the very top center is our rear view camera. And then we've got our brake light coming down. We've got the brake lights on the side. We've got the park sense sensors here that are gonna help you when you're parking the Revel. And then we've got our 5,000 pound hitch um, with our seven way. So 5,000 pound hitch, you can easily tow your golf cart, your four by fours, your jet skis, um, you name it. Whatever you want to make this uh, your adventure van and the toys you want to take along with it, you're not going to have a problem. 
towing. Um, remember the torque is 325, so that's a big deal. And just beyond the hitch, we have the storage for our stinky slinky or sewer hose. So the great part about the Revel, well, one of the great things about the Revel is your doors open up all the way. So you have full access to that huge garage. So what are you going to fill it with? Is it hiking gear? Is it mountain bikes? Is it canoes? Is it stand-up paddle boards? Um, anything you want. It's just so big. It's so nice. So the bed is fully raised to the ceiling right now. So you have all this gear room. But with it raised, you can see that you've got the cargo net there that will store gear. You also have your little um, pack of gear here that's got the zipper. Basically a little toolbox if you want it to be there on the underside of the bed. We've got the lights in here. And then the fresh water tank has been raised so it's all above ground and it's behind this panel here. 21 gallon and that's really nice again that gives you that extended season use by having your um, fresh water tank above ground. And then we've got our water system so we've got our shower we're just going to hook in our shower here um, so we can rinse off our bikes, ourselves, our pets before we come into the coach. Our water pump is right there. This is the light for our external security light on the driver's side of the van. And then each dial will tell you how you need to, um, what direction you need to put these levers in depending on how you're using the van. So if you're dry camping, you're gonna have your white down, green up, red up, and blue to the side. So it tells you exactly what to do, power fill, city water fill, if you're gonna winterize your coach. Now, if we're not lucky enough to have you as one of our storage customers at National Indoor RV Centers, where we store at least 300 coaches indoors at each of our locations, then you would need to winterize your coach, you know, if, if you're in a cold area. Um, if you do need to do that, um, the instructions are in the manual. Um, if you store with us at National Indoor RV Centers, you don't need to worry about that. It really makes your coach usable year round. You just have to be careful of temperatures, um, that they don't get too far below freezing, but you know, leave it with us. No need to, to winterize. More cargo nets here where you can put items. And then on the other side, we've got another cargo net and two 110 outlets. Now notice we've got the six D rings. And so you can, you know, tie down all your gear. Also, this is the honeycomb, lightweight, durable, waterproof floor. So that's great in the Revel. You know, one of the things that I like to commend Winnebago about, um, I really want to give them credit, is that they were first to market with this concept. Um, so I really, truly think they do it best. Um, they have been, you can say, often imitated, never duplicated. And then we've got a nice storage, nice deep storage pocket here, right inside the coach. Now, if you look over here, this is your cutoff switch for your inverter. So you turn that off here. Uh, if you're storing your coach, you wanna make sure you turn that off. Then we've got the light switch for the lights in the garage. Two, one ten, or two USB outlets. And this is a solar um, input. So the Revel comes standard with two solar panels. You got two, 215 watts of solar panel up top right now. You've got a controller that will take up to 450. So let's say you're in a beautiful campground and it's totally covered and you're not getting any um, draw from your solar panels. You can hook up in a, a portable solar panel here and then walk it out to where there's some sunshine. You also have storage and the cargo nets in each of the doors. Behind this panel is your lithium battery. So this year in 23, you went from 250 amp hours to 320 amp hours. So that's quite a bit of difference. Um, great battery. It's just, you went from two before to now it's just one. Um, then you do have an on and off switch here. So if you are not storing your Coach National Indoor RV Centers, and you're gonna be away from it for at least like two weeks, I would definitely go in here and turn that battery off. Um, lithium batteries don't like the cold. It does have a heater in it. Um, so I get a call occasionally from customers saying, you know, their battery's not charging and um, 
it's got to get up to at least like 27 degrees warmth area for it to start to charge. So anyway, just a little couple of key points there, but this is where you turn that on and off um, for storage. Also in this compartment is your breaker style of fuse and then your Xantrex inverter. I've gone ahead and shut the roll off screen in the back here. So you can see that you can easily sleep with the screen down and then you just tuck that extra part in. Now the cool part about this is once again, you've got the easy escape. Don't have to monkey with the zipper. And then if you wanna make it a little bit harder, there is a Velcro tab here to keep it shut in case there's a strong wind or if you wanna keep the pets in, you can just Velcro that so that it stays a little bit tighter shut. You can also open this completely if you want to not have the screen. And then if you want to have complete darkness so that you don't want that bright sun coming in to wake you up early in the morning, you can black it out or, you know, partially black it out. You can decide so that you can just have a little bit of fresh air coming through, but not that sun coming straight into your eyes. So really cool. Love this option again. So nice and easy to use. So I'm gonna show you how cool this ladder is. First of all, there's a lock on the ladder so no one can steal it. So you just have to unlock it and then unscrew it. Make sure you put that a safe spot where you won't forget it. And then you can just pull the ladder off. It's super lightweight. I believe it will support 225 pounds, um, but you can take it around to the side where it might make it. I'm gonna put it here by the running board so I have an extra little step when I go to get on it and it just locks in. Make sure it's at a good spot here on the side. Now I'm gonna use my running board and then I'm just going to head right up. Now I can see my two solar panels. It helps to keep them clean, clean them off. You can see your max fan vent. Um, you also have your roof access port right above here and then your AC units. We have one, two, three, four, five cross members, so five times 40 is 200. You can get 200 pounds up top um, as long as you can find the uh, a place to put it. <laughs> as I come around the driver's side, you'll notice this big uh, wing that sticks out and you've got it on the other side as well. It comes out further on the driver's side, gives you an extra foot of sleeping area um, inside the Revel. So that's really cool and I'll show you that when we get inside. Just below that, we've got the plug-in for our 30 amp shore power cord. And then straight above it, we've got the exterior light for the driver's side of the, of the coach. That's really nice, because the next thing we're gonna go to here is our cassette toilet. And then below the cassette toilet, we have the gray waste tank drain and T-bar. You can even see a part of that tank down there. Now that's one of the cool things about Winnebago. They have a plastics facility. They make all their own holding tanks. And what's neat about that is that they can customize those tanks and the sizes to the actual coach and floor plan. Whereas most other manufacturers just have to buy whatever the supplier has to offer, Winnebago's are custom made to their floor plan. Now above the waste drain here, we've got our cassette toilet. You're just gonna pull that blue lever up and then you can bring out the, essentially your black tank. Um, you've got a little tote here, so you can take it wherever it needs to go, but this is gonna be the elbow that you can move so that you can easily dump it however it works best for you. Now, one of the things you have to know is this is a pressure release valve here. So without pushing that button here, you're gonna have the pressure built up, nothing's gonna come out. Um, this is the vent, so when I slide this in, this pushes this down so it vents the tank and then this is where um, you have a float, lets you know when that tank's getting full. Also, this is where you could um, add, you know, sanitize the tank or add microblaze. You can also do that through the toilet itself. Microblaze is a product that we like at National Indoor RV Centers. This isn't a paid advertisement either. I should call them. <laughs> but what it does, it's a microorganism that actually makes everything inside your black tank liquid. So much easier to dump. So put that back in here, and then we're gonna go ahead and push it back in. You'll see as I push that in, what happens is this opens up, so then you can flush the toilet from inside, and that's what happens when you 
push the lever inside, it opens up that door. I wouldn't be doing all this touching if this has been used before. <laughs> it's just that it's nice and clean right now. And then you can just shut it away and you can lock that as well. Also note, you've got the nice running board on the driver's side of the coach. I love that it's the full length because as you just saw, I used the ladder without that running board. It would have been a little bit of a high step. So it is useful on this side. Now behind this door, you have to open up your driver's side door. Um, is your fuel tank, diesel fuel tank, 24 gallon diesel fuel tank. That's another thing that National Indoor RV Centers can upfit for you. We can take it from a 24 gallon um, fuel tank to 40 gallon fuel tank. So that's a huge difference and you can go a lot further that way. Now that you've seen all the cool features that the Rebel has to offer on the outside of the coach, let's check out the interior. So I'm excited to show you everything inside the Rebel. First of all, we have great storage. Right above me, we've got storage here. It's really high. So most of the time, you can just barely get in like the, the front shades, but you can see that this is high and really deep because not only do I have my little Winnebago Bible manual kit, I've got all the blinds, covers, and I can barely get my tip, uh, tips of my fingers to the very back of that compartment. So lots of space and storage. We've got the South Co latches, so these are not going to open or rattle as you're going down the road. And then you just pull the latch, open it up. These cabinets are nice and sturdy. I'm pretty sure I could hang from them. Uh, they are made out of aluminum, they're E-coated, and they're always, any cabinet is backed into steel, so it's super strong. Then right on top of this door, you can see that there's this little label right there. So Winnebago makes this um, cabinet door. If somehow this got damaged, you can get a replacement from, for, from Winnebago. So that's the cool thing about them manufacturing so much of this coach, they actually can make you a replacement part if you need. So you never take off those labels. They're super important. You take a picture of that, send it to Winnebago, and they can source that part for you. So I've turned the captain and the co-captain's chairs around so you can see how much space you have in, let's call it the living room, <laughs> or family room, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this is really nice if you are going to use the Revel as your home office. You've got your table right here. You can easily move that if you want to, you know, if you want this extra space here, if you want to put your computer up here, you have the 110 underneath the bench seat, so you can plug everything in. Got your window, I've got it open right now. I have this great cross breeze going. Um, I do love the windows too, so let's talk about those. So you can open it just a little bit or all the way up, you decide. I'm gonna keep it open just barely. Now I want to um, black it out though. I want to make this nice and dark. I'm just going to bring out my blackout shade. How great is that? And I can do a little bit of a duel if I want a little bit of privacy, but I still want that um, fresh air. You can do it like that. So how cool is that? They don't interfere with what your, your workspace. You're not going to hit a blind. It's just, these are my favorite. <laughs> can you tell I like them? So right above the window, we've got the outlets, 12 volt, two USB, and then we've got our RAM track. To the side of each captain chair, you have a nice little hook. So if you wanna hang a jacket or your ball cap, whatever, it's just nice that you have those extra hooks. Now you have two seat belts. This has the shoulder seat belt, and then this is just the lap seat belt. And then I can pull this forward. I've got a little cubby there for storage. I like that. I kind of like the secret compartments too. And then you can just fasten that cushion right back in here. I did want to show you though on um, this cushion, again, here's your label. You never want to take those off again because if something were to happen to this cushion and you need a replacement, you can take a picture of that and send it to Winnebago so that they can source you this same part, same fabric too. So really cool that they do that there in their stitch craft. Um, facility and then if you want to snap that into place so that it doesn't move it's just that easy below the bench in front of the captain's chair here we have a nice big storage compartment you can see that that's bigger than it actually looks but it's nice to have that extra space here to the side of the bench we've got the breaker box 
and our fuses. And they are nicely labeled. So here's the control panel for pretty much everything you need to control in the Revel. So I'm gonna start at the top here. This is for our bed, so you can see that we've got it raised all the way to the ceiling right now. Then you need to put this little key in. Comes with your key fobs. So put that in, you're gonna turn it, and now you can move that bed up and down. So it moves really quickly. You can stop it halfway, or you can take it all the way down so you're ready to go to bed at night. Doesn't get any better than that, but you do have to have that key in for it to operate. So this is the Timberline uh, panel. Now, if you want more in-depth information about all the functions of this, you can um, go to timberline.com, look it up. You can also look in your owner's manual. So this is where you can set your furnace. You can turn your furnace on, and this is your burner. And then this is your electric element. So you can either have one on, or you can have them both on. Set your temperature there and then that's for your water. Set the temperature of your water. Again, you can turn on the burner to heat your water or the burner and electric element. Then you can, and just to change that temperature, it's really easy. You just pull your finger along that dial and set the temperature. Then you've got your settings here, so you can scroll through them, your brightness of the screen. You can lower that sleep mode, timeout. Um, your fan speed here. We've got it in auto mode right now. And then your clock and your service information. And like I said before, just go to your owner's manual for more detailed information on this panel and how to use it. The one place will allow us to turn on our water pump and check our tank levels. Your fresh water tank is empty. Again, that's 21 gallon and your gray waste tank is empty and that is also 21 gallons. You can get the status of your batteries, your chassis and your house batteries, and then you can also use your app for the lithionic batteries. So you just pair with the uh, battery here. So right now it's gonna give me current status, which is 56% charge, voltage, current, power, and if you see that you've got this little green dot here, that's kind of like the heartbeat of the unit and you can go scroll over and get more specific information. It will kind of spell it out for you here. So your battery temperature, BMS temperature, uh, the remaining time that you have, which is also on the other page. But this just kind of breaks it all down to you, for you. Right here, it tells you the remaining time. So as we're using the battery right now, we have 22 hours, six, um, 16 minutes best way to charge this battery is by driving the coach. Um, so driving the coach is the best way. Next way is to be plugged in. That's going to be slower. And then the third way is through your solar panels, which is like trying to fill a um, swimming pool with a water hose. Very slow. So the best way to do it is to drive it. This is your Xantrax. This is where you turn on and off your inverter. Then we've got our light switches here. So this first one is for the bathroom. When you toggle up, you've got the bright light, middle is off, and down is low. And this is for your galley or walkway. And then this is for the linear light here behind me. This is your solar panel disconnect. So you can turn that off or turn that on right here. And then you have your solar charge controller, which tells you how many um, amps you're bringing into the coach. So underneath the bench, you've got a little bit more storage. Just lifts up easily. Now this is where I've got the extendable countertop um, stored. So you can see the space there. And then also, just to show you again, you've got your little label right there in case you ever lose this piece and you need a replacement. But it's just gonna go right in here and it will snap in right there. So you just line it up and then you just Move it until it clicks and it's nice and sturdy. So that just extended my prep area by quite a bit here. Then we've got our stainless steel sink and our faucet. We've got nice tray here for miscellaneous items. And then to the side of it, I've got two USB charging ports. And right above that, I've got another RAM track so you can add accessories there and a push button light 
I love those because it's easy to find and it gives you lots of light. And then we've got storage above. Again, those just stay open, which is really nice. Again, nice strong shelves and drawer below. So this is our induction cooktop, which is portable. So I can just take that out. I can use it right here in the kitchen. Really cool thing is I can take it outside, cook outside. I love that option because really that's what the Revel is all about is being outside, being out with one with nature and you know, one with nature with your induction cooktop, right? <laughs> we don't want to have give away too many of the luxuries that we have at home. Then we have our next little drawer. and even enough space there for a garbage can, which is really key because the last thing you want in the aisleway here is a garbage can. And we have the water pump right there that we can turn on and our pantry with adjustable shelves. I also want to point out the Flying W. So this can be a little towel rack or you put your cap there. I like that they have these, you notice it on the running board. They use the Flying W, it's their um, logo. And how that came about was John Hansen, the founder of Winnebago, his son wrote out the Winnebago word and then he did the W like this, the Flying W. And that's became, that became their logo. So just a little story for you to remember, but I love how Winnebago uses that throughout the coach. Now inside, just before we go into the bathroom here, you'll see a thermistor. That's um, to communicate with your thermostat to keep the temperature nice and pleasant in here. You have a lock on the door for your bathroom, so make sure when you get into travel mode that you lock that. If you wanna know more, um, you know, everyone should have an RV travel checklist. I have one, I did a whole RV 101 series. Now I did the series in a class A diesel, but I think a lot of the things that I do on that trip pertain to van life as well. So if that's something that you're interested, go check out that video. Now inside the bathroom, we've got the bamboo shelves. So you can take these out and then you'll have the whole bathroom where you can have your shower and everything. You can also use this as a wardrobe. So if you wanna hang clothes in here, if you're not planning on using the bathroom, you can do that and just hang your clothes here. You have a little hook for a towel. Those are always super important. And then we've got this box full of everything that we need. So we've got our shower. Um, we've got the connection for the shower outside. And we have the shower curtain, which just snaps into place right up there. So now with the bamboo shelves removed, you can see that you've got a full size shower in here. You'd also want to take out that bar. So you had a little bit more space. It's also vented and it's power vent. So you can just open that up and shut that so it doesn't become like a sauna <laughs> inside there. You're hot and you're cold. And then you've got a place for your shower head to attach right there. Now this is um, your Thetford toilet and you can turn that so that you have more leg room. So you can do that however works best for you. We've got a storage compartment here. I can put our shampoo or whatever in there. And then we've got the cover for the toilet paper so that that's not gonna get wet. And then you've got a drain so that all the water will just drain right out of your shower. So finally back to the bed, I've already lowered it. You can see how nice and big this space is and that extra space um, with the pop-out wings is really key. We also have a window, which I think that's super important so that you can have some cross breeze here. Um, and it, again, you have those cassette blackout shades or the screen, great option there again. And then you also have storage space underneath. You've got these nice um, slats here that are gonna give you cushion and spring in your bed rather than being on just a totally flat bed, it makes a big difference and everything, all these cushions just fit in perfectly so you can extend that bed as far as possible. So that's really, really nice. You've got the lights above and then we've got our AC unit. Now the cool thing with the lithionic batteries, you can run this not plugged in. So AC, nice and quiet, no generator. So you can also turn it on while you're driving if you want and set it to low cool, fan, whatever. So you can pair that and control your AC unit off of your phone. 
if you're not using it off your phone, um, you just can set the temperature high and low, and then you just scroll through the big button here to go from heat option to fan option to cool high and low. And then you can also adjust the flow of the air so it comes straight down or you can push it out to the sides. So if it's been a hot day, you're ready to go to bed and you want a lot of air coming in, you'll just direct that airflow straight down. Just beyond the AC unit, you've got your carbon monoxide detector. And then just in front of the fan, you've got your smoke alarm and then we have the fire extinguisher. So three things that again, that are gonna keep you safe while you're RVing. Now, over here, we've got the 12 volt receptacle and two USB charging ports. We have the push button lights. So those are really nice. Each reader or each sleeper can control their own light. So we have the two 110 outlets. Then this is the light for the garage area when the bed's lifted or under now the bed it's lit. And then this is the toggle light for up here. So we have the bright, off, and then the dim. We have another RAM track here on the wall and the RAM track on the front. You can add accessories. You can check those out on Amazon. And then we have the safety um, hook. So once we bring the bed up, we're going to attach the safety hook to the bed itself so that it's secure in travel mode. So the seat on the Mercedes chassis is super comfortable. Let me tell you how the, it functions. So this is going to raise and lower the front of the seat. Then this is your four-way lumbar support. So you can get that just right. And then this will raise or lower the back of the seat. And then we've got the dial here in the back that will move your backrest to the back of your seat. Now just below the seat, we've got the fuse box panel. Below my feet here, we have the chassis battery. And then underneath the seat, if I move this lever to the left, then I can rotate the chair. It locks back into place. And then this will move the seat forward and back. Right up here is the lever, which will release the front hood. We have a nice armrest here when the door is shut, and then we can grab in here to pull the door shut. Window controls, and then the internal controls for our exterior mirrors, and then the center button here will pull those exterior mirrors in, or fold them in. And we have the unlock, unlock, and the door handle, cup holder, and extra space, and then a lot of extra space down below. That may be where you wanna keep your atlas for those that are old school like me. Here are the lighting controls, so we can have our day running lights, have our lights on auto, or just turn the lights on, and then we've got our fog lights, and then this is our light that just will illuminate a light in the back of the coach, so if you have to pull over to the side of the road, just let people know you're there, and then this is going to control the dimness and brightness of your display screen. This is probably one of my favorite things because it's the windshield wipers. They are rain sensing windshield wipers, but they also have the water inside the blade itself. And again, that's 25% more efficient and saves on your windshield wiper fluid. Now just below at the bottom of the column is where you would adjust the height of the column. So you can make that so it's comfortable for you. And then we've got paddles on the left and the right. Um, to manually shift. So here's the home button for your display cluster up front. So I'm just going to hit the home and then I can scroll through all the different options. So I'm gonna go into service. That's going to give me my DEF level. So I can click into that and see that it's good. And then my tire pressure, that will display while I'm driving. Again, this is gonna be really easy to do while you're driving too. Your oil level and particular filter. Then I'm gonna to go to my drive assist. This will really display more information again once I'm driving, adaptive cruise control, following distance, etc. Trip information. So I could scroll through that. My current consumption, my driving habits, um, my acceleration, my coasting, and my constant. Okay. 
navigation. So I can do that and I'll show you more of that on the other screen. My radio controls, media controls, phone and settings. I can go into my vehicle settings here. This is where your rain sensor would be. You can adjust that to low sensitivity, low sensitivity or standard. And then your display and operation. So again, this is where you can make your DEF a permanent on your screen, which I prefer, or you can do it for reserve, but I like to keep it up there constantly. Then we have our cruise control button. So you just hit that to turn it on and you're set. And then you can increase your speed or decrease your speed and your resume and cancel. And then this is where you can adjust your following distance while driving. So then we have our horn. Then we have all the controls here for this display screen, which I'll show this. This is also a touch screen, but I'll scroll through and let you see what you can do here. So I can scroll through all of this information, settings, apps, info, media, radio, navigation. We can hit that here. So it is really nice to have it on the steering column. So just as a safety feature, but I can also go back and do that all by touch screen as well. So you're gonna have your volume for your radio. You can answer a call, hang up, voice commands, and then this will take you right to your favorites button, which over here I'll show you how you can customize that and pull in apps that you use often. Here's your transmission shift. So you push up for reverse, down for drive, and in for park. And you just have to have your foot on the brake as you do that. Push button control for our, our engine start and stop. And you need to have the key fob within a reasonable distance for that to work. If the key fob is like, for example, you've got the key for the bed hanging up by the bed, it won't work. It's not close enough. So keep that close enough. So you can just push it once if you want to go into accessory mode. And then if you want to start, push the brake pedal, hold it down, vehicle is on, and then to turn the vehicle off, push the brake pedal down and hold the button, turns it off. Super easy. This button will take you into four wheel drive. Now you need to be going below seven miles per hour. I think it's just safer to pull over to the side of the road, stop, engage the four wheel drive, and then keep going. This will put you into low mode if you're going up a hill. Here on the MBUX screen, we have lots of functions. So we can go to our home button and then we can scroll through all of our options. So you can go into navigation and then just go back to your home, Bluetooth your phone connected. You can do that uh, wirelessly. And then you've got your radio buttons, media, info, your apps. So here you can also add apps that will work on the vehicle as well. And then we can go to our settings. So this is where you can, your quick access, you can turn your park assist on or off. Of course, I want that on. Turn on your active lane keeping assist on or off. I'm gonna turn that on. We can go to assistance here. These are all of our safety things that are built in. So our traffic sign assist, visual and audible. Visual, you can customize that. Active lane keeping, active brake assist attention assist and blind spot assist. So you can determine if you want early warning, medium or late or off. So again, there's so many things you can do um, with this screen and you can really go through it thoroughly in your manual. Automatically lock the doors, gas station search, lights, systems where you can um, Customize your screen. Now this will take you to your cameras, telephone, navigation, or radio. Those are just your quick buttons. The volume control. This will take you back to your home button. This will mute. This will take you to your quick access buttons. And this will take you to your seek and scan button. Now right below here, we've got the heat and cooling controls and our fan controls. AC direction where that fan um, is blowing, our hazards, defrost, circulate internal air, 
and your defrost for your rear, rear window. Your cup holder or key holder as I like to use it. And then right below that, you've got a USB-C outlet and 12 volt outlet. And then just below this is where you reset your fob if for some reason it's not communicating with the coach. So on the top of the dash, you've got two more cup holders, a little storage compartment here, and another one for the, dry, for the passenger. And then one in the center, and that has a 12 volt receptacle. This is where you can connect your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, or you can do it wirelessly. And then this is where you can charge your devices with your USB-C. All right, we've got a nice little pocket here in front of the co-pilot at my feet. Again, is the toolbox underneath here. And then right inside here is the jack. Here's our rear view mirror. And then straight up, we've got a place for our sunglasses, SOS button in case you're in an accident. And then over here, roadside assistance if you need help. And we've got our reading light for the driver, reading light for the passenger, this is the light. Um, you can determine if you want the light to come on with the doors open. And then this light will light up the whole dome here for extra light. There's no more dome light in the back, so that really doesn't do anything. Then we've got the sun visors and storage above the sun visor on both sides. I pulled out my blackout shades so you can see how easy they are to put up. You just put them up in the windshield. You've got a little spot here to go around your rear view mirror so that you have complete privacy. And then it just Velcros. Push that up into the space. And then you just use your sun visor to hold it in place. Push the Velcro together here. And then you just pop it up, pull that sun visor down, and you're good to go. Now on your windows, there's a little trick. Go to the little white tab, and there's a D for driver's side key for passenger side, so make sure that you're doing it the right direction. Then there's magnets that will help it hold it in place, but I always like to open the door and then kind of shut it so that it remains in place as well. So I'm gonna open the door. We're gonna make sure those magnets stay, kind of get in place, and then I'm gonna shut the door and it will hold it in place. It will make it very secure. Now you can see how easy it is to get complete privacy. All right, so it's finally time for the fun stuff. Let's take the Revel out on the road and test her out. This is my cameraman's favorite job <laughs> to try to keep things straight while we're having some fun off-roading here. The great thing about the Revel, you can put it in uh, four-wheel drive and you can really go just about anywhere you want. You know, some things will get a little technical, but uh, it's really fun to drive. So how do you know how fun it is to drive? you have to come out to National Indoor RV Centers and take one for a ride for yourself. What's nice about the Revel is that you can, you know, have the fun off-road and then safely drive the van on-road as well with all the safety features that they built in, you know, adaptive cruise control. The other thing I always love is cruise control, set the cruise control, and then just take your foot off the accelerator and enjoy the ride. So I do love that about the Revel. It gives you so many options and um, allows you to have a lot of fun. And really it takes you off the grid. So you don't have to stay um, on the road. You don't have to stay in a park. Um, the AC running off the lithionics batteries. You can you know, go boondocking and be comfortable all at the same time. Now I'm sure you're wondering how much um, this awesome Revel costs. Well, current MSRP is 216,817. Now, if you want to know what I can sell it to you for, give me a call at National Indoor RV Centers. With our volume and economies of scale, RV simply costs less when you call National Indoor RV Centers. So if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please hit the like and subscribe. Also check out my Winnebago factory tour video and our protein fire suppression system. And then you can check out my RV 101 series. Thanks so much for spending this time with me. I'm gonna go and hit the road and have a little bit more fun, but I really appreciate you. Have a great day.